So one of the things we've been talking about in this class is this idea that a city can have a certain identity. We said in one of the opening videos that typically in antiquity one of the interesting developments in a city is when people tend to identify more with the city than say they do with their extended kinship group. That uh, you identify yourself as an Athenian, as a Roman, as opposed to a golden in my case. right? Uh, so one of the best examples of that, I think, has to do with the city of Athens itself. And one of the best stories from that, where how the Athenians identify themselves, comes down to one of the stories they told each other, they told themselves. And uh, it's come down to us as one of the interesting stories, I think, about what it means to Athenians. This has a lot to do with the Athenians and how they define themselves. Uh, when the story goes, when, once upon a time, this new city was developing, they didn't have a name. They didn't know what they would call themselves. And most Greek city-states, all Greek city-states in antiquity, associate themselves in some fashion with a god or a goddess who will be their special favored god or goddess. Uh, this is a patron deity. And we don't know how all Greek city-states got their patron deities, but we do know how Athens got hers. So the story goes, brand new city, developing in Greece, they haven't decided what to call themselves yet, and so they know they need a patron god or goddess to lead them. So they have a contest. The Athenians have a contest, a competition. And we will send a letter up to Mount Olympus and say, hey, gods and goddesses of Greece, New city down here in the southern part of Greece wants a patron deity. All interested, please come and apply. The story is that both Athena and Poseidon, god of the sea, thought they might have some interest in uh, this kind of competition. So uh, Poseidon came down, and the people of the city were very excited to see Poseidon, and they asked him to give a little speech, a little performance, if you will. And so Poseidon came forward, he, he went to the Acropolis, the high ground of the city, and he took his mighty trident and he made a great speech. Oh, my people, my people of the future, Poseidonia, because I'm sure you'll want to name the town for me. One day your sailors will rule the seas of the Mediterranean. One day you will be powerful as I, as your patron, will help you travel far and wide, spreading your culture and your ideas. Choose me as your patron god, and I shall make you powerful, memorable, famous. And the people looked up at the Acropolis, listened to this talk, and they, they, they discussed amongst themselves, they went back and forth, and then some of them came up and said, Yo, Poseidon, uh, do you do any tricks? Do you do anything interesting? Uh, we love entertainment here. Could you please uh, do something fabulous? And so Poseidon, looking a little bothered, a little disturbed, took his mighty trident and he smote the Acropolis with his trident and upsprung a spring of water. Now, this, you should know, uh, Greece is very much drought prone. Greece has a shortage of water, so the people were very impressed, very excited. They climbed up to the Acropolis, they, they shook Poseidon's hand, they tasted the water, <coughs> they spit it out. Oh, Poseidon, salt water, salt water, bad form. Oh, move along. Next, and up came Athena. And Athena, also on the Acropolis, gave a great speech. I am Athena, she said, daughter of Zeus, uh, sprung full grown from his head. Mm. Uh, yow, Zeus said, yow, said Athena as she was born, uh, crying a war cry. So Athena, goddess, uh, uh, sprung from her father's head. She is therefore uh, connected to wisdom. She is connected to uh, thinking, philosophy. She's also a goddess of war. Uh, she gives, starts her speech, and she said, I am the daughter of Zeus, a goddess of war. Should you make me your patron deity, I shall protect you. I shall lead you in warfare. And believe me, you people, you're going to be people engaged in war. As it turns out, they were. Uh, I am a goddess of mentis, of uh, philosophy. One day, the people of Athens, should you choose to call me your patron, will be known for their wisdom, their philosophy. I'm also a goddess of craftsmanship, techne. One day, the, uh, the, the, the crafts of Athens, the, the beautiful art, uh, the pottery, uh, the textiles will be famous throughout the world. 
And the people thought, oh, lovely, lovely. She's very nice. Uh, they discussed, they debated, and they called up to Athena up on the Acropolis. Athena, do you do any tricks? We love entertainment. So she took her war spear and she smote the Acropolis and upsprung an olive tree, fully grown, bearing fruit. And the people climbed up to the Acropolis and they congratulated Athena and they looked at the olive tree and they said, well, you know, that's lovely, but we've got lots of those all over the place. What's so special about that? And she says, oh, you people, the olive, the olive tree uh, provides oil to cook, oil for cleaning. Um, and one day, your olive oil will be famous throughout the world, which you know it is. Uh, the olive itself is a fruit that is, that is good for eating. Uh, so uh, this is a fabulous uh, tree. Besides that, she says, don't you understand? It takes 30 years for an olive tree to grow to full fruit and, and give out. And I just, woo, there it is. So the people were impressed. Uh, they went back down to the Agora, their marketplace, the open area where they discuss things, right? And they, they discussed, they debated, they went back and forth, Poseidon, Athena, Poseidon, Athena. And then the people took a vote. And the people of Athens voted for Athena to be their patron deity. I bring you this story because I think it's a great example of the history and culture of Athens, their myth-making, their storytelling, their connection to the entertainments, their understanding that they themselves, as one of the first fully democratic societies that we understand, that we know of, chose which god they would celebrate. The gods didn't choose them. The Athenians chose their gods.